I've been willing to basically read this book for quite some time. And then I finally did. And then I realized that most of the information on there is basically sort of outdated. And because it's outdated, there was only one segment that I could basically take, adopt, and at the same time share further. Um, whilst, you know, not sharing irrelevant content that has no meaning or purpose whatsoever. I know a lot of marketers are currently on the lookout for this book. And I know that David Ogilvy is also very, very famous for his copywriting skills of long form copy, which is basically what he's the, he's the father of. And this segment basically focuses directly on copywriting. So writing potent copy. There's a couple of, it's very basic and a lot of like simple points that we just generally tend to overlook. But I think that if you go over them, like let's say maybe once every two months or once every three months, and you just re-solidify them in your head that these are the basics that we need to work with no matter what type of developments come our way, you could see like a lot of benefits um, directly from the knowledge attained. As always, um, there's a link to our Growth Hackers group, which is a WhatsApp mastermind and a Facebook group. There's a link in the description below. And I'd love to hear your feedback on the content itself. So feel free to drop a comment below. I always respond because yeah, it's not like it gets, you know, crazy traction anyways. And that's about that. Today, we're going to be talking about the confessions of an advertising man. So this series, basically, where I just take books and like everything that's part of my education and I just distill it down to the most important parts is going to be a continuous series. So expect more of that. And if you'd like to see more, subscribe, etc. Like the video, comment below. Do everything that you can in order to get the algorithm up and going um, referring to YouTube right now the book that I've been reading at this given moment is confessions of an advertising man and I've actually made an attempt to distill the whole book previously but then there's a bit of an issue with this book it was written before the 2000s way 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 before the 2000s and David Ogilvy which is like the founding father of marketing as we know it right now his information is pretty outdated. The only dated stuff that can be applied to contemporary use, so use today and uh, like on a day by day basis throughout your marketing activities is marketing copy. So potent copy. And that's a chapter that he allocates specifically within the book itself. It's segmented into two parts. One is headlines and the other part is the copy as well. And it can be directly applied to any article that you're writing, any post that you're writing, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's on Facebook, any funnel that you're creating as well, whether it's on ClickFunnels or whether you're creating a funnel on whatever platform, as long as you're creating a funnel or on videos as well, because like video, video content is, it sort of shares the same elements to text content but not entirely, of course. There's, a, there's additional senses that it triggers, but every video includes a thumbnail, which is just like a headline, and every video typically includes a description as well, which is just like the body or the copy itself. So this information could be directly cross-applied to any text content, and it can be directly cross-applied to any video content that you do create, which is pretty important just to state that. Now, as I mentioned before, um, it's important to understand that the book is outdated. It's still a good read, right? Not the best read, but it's a good read if you want to get yourself into the flow of like, let's say running an agency or maintaining your clients. He does share some very insightful insightful insights <laughs> um, regarding the, 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 the whole art and practice itself. But with regards to direct information that can be cross applied as soon as you turn off this video or as soon as this video is done, I think the most important segment is potent copy. So regarding his approach and what I've done basically is I've just segmented some of the parts that I found most interesting and I'll just run by them piece by piece. You can also, you know, have this as a podcast. You can basically just turn off the video if you have YouTube premium and just listen to my beautiful voice as I cover the segments piece by piece. On top as well, you'll see the uh, quotation of we sell or else, right? And I think it's very, very important because this quotation basically highlights the mindset of Ogilvy and why he was such a major success. We sell or else is something that he used to say and something that he includes in his books over and over again as a reminder to what marketing is. And that's something that you learn once you read scientific advertising as well by, uh, it's actually highly recommended as a highly recommended book by Ogilvy. Um, I keep forgetting the name of the author, but nevertheless. So we sell or else basically means that marketing is a direct extension of sales period 
direct extension of sales. Sales means that you're selling one-to-one, -one. you're selling from one person to another, you're door knocking, you're cold calling, you're running ads, people register their interest, you hop on a call with them, right? They're, they've qualified themselves, etc. one-to-one. -one. And marketing basically means one to 100, or one to 1,000, or one to 10,000, or one to 20,000, right? The medium in sales is voice, right? That's why there's focus on tonality, uh, it's voice and just physical appearance, right? The ability to actually appear in front of a client, etc. With marketing, it's different. It's a wide array of mediums, ranging from text to video to audio, etc. So it's the same thing, right? But you just have to change the medium in a different way. But the 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 motive and the the main point stays the same. We sell or else, or else we go broke, right? But we sell. I just really hope that you guys are able to drill this down in your head because that's the foundation of marketing. And that's where I think right now in the upcoming two to three years, you're going to have a sort of division, right? With people that forget this and then people that remember this and they stick to this, right? And they're going to be highly productive, whereas the other ones are sort of going to get lost <laughs> because they've sort of like just lost the way. Marketing is selling, period. It's not entertainment. Even like in an entertainment article at the end of the day, you have a CTA, right? If you want to find out more, if you want more, uh, part of my friend shits and giggles, sign up to our newsletter. You're selling them for a newsletter. So again, we sell or else. I just find it like it really standard, stood out for me, especially for me considering that my roots are in business development and sales. So the first segment basically is headlines, right? And as you can see, he describes it as headline is the most important element in most advertisements. It is the telegram which decides the reader whether to read the copy. On average, five times as many people read the headline as they read the body copy. When you have written your headline, you have spent 80 cents out of your dollar, etc. Uh, the headline ticket on the meat, use it to flag down the readers who are prospects for the kind of product you're advertising. If you're selling a re remedy for bladder weakness, display the words bladder weakness in your headline. They catch the eye of everyone who suffers from this inconvenience. If you want mothers to read your advertisement, display mothers in your headline and so on. So we'll just take it step by step, right? The headline at the end of the day, it applies to videos too. As I mentioned, it's a different headline. It's a, it's a different medium, right? When I see an article, I want to see the title first and foremost. After I see the title, then I realize, okay, it's relevant. I want to read on. If it's, let's say, top 59 tools that growth hackers need to know, right? Like halfway through 2020, it's relevant to me. I'll click on it. I'll read it, right? So relevance, headline, just the importance of the headline. And it applies to videos too. If I'm on YouTube, right? And I'm, um, I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And I'm looking for information with regards to Facebook ads, right? So I'll see the headline, Facebook ads 2020. I'll see the thumbnail as well, which is a supporting element of the headline. It's the exact same thing. It's the tag on the meat, right? So it makes sense. And this is something that no matter how outdated it gets, right? It still serves a very, very important purpose in let's say 2020, despite the fact that these paragraphs were written somewhere in the 60s or 70s, if I'm not mistaken. So that's, I don't know, anywhere from 40 to 50 years ahead, right? So that's important, the importance of the headline itself. Um, if you're selling a remedy for bladder weakness, display the words bladder weakness. If you want mothers to read it, display mothers in your headline. So very, very important. The headline is the initial filter, right, to who's actually going to read your content and who's going to engage with it and read the actual copy itself, etc. Uh, this segment as well, and I sort of cut it like wrong. It says, do not exclude any readers who might be prospects for your product. Thus, if you're advertising a product which can be used equally well by men and women, don't slant your headline at women alone. It would frighten men away. So the headline itself should always include the main demographic, but it should not exclude other demographics, right? It shouldn't be not for men, only for women. It should be for both, which I guess at the end of the day is a no-brainer, but it was just an important point for me to cover for myself above all. The other one is always try to inject news into your headlines because the consumer is always on the lookout for new products or new ways to use an old product or new improvements in an old product. And I know this sounds like hyper technical, but the point is, let's say if you're releasing an article on um, top things marketers need to know, right? If it's top things marketers need to know, 
it's actually not that compelling for me to read. If it's top things more marketers need to know in the given month which is like May of 2020 a lot more compelling because it means that it's contemporary it's new it's not outdated information right if other people wouldn't be talking about confessions of an advertising man I probably would have never read this book but because other notable figures are talking about it I've taken the time to read it right because the book I wouldn't have read it before because the book is outdated right whereas if it's confessions of an advertising man updated or revamped it's a different story so because we have such a big plethora and like over ambience of information at the given moment with your me producing video content your general like typical 16 year old living in his i don't know mom's basement for instance making video content as well there's a lot there's an ambience so therefore you have to narrow it down as much as possible and this directly cross applies to your video content your text content etc try to include uh, signs of freshness signs of new contemporary updated etc which i think is quite important as well then every headline should appeal to the reader's self-interest it should promise a benefit as in my headline for helena rubinstein's hormone cream how women over 35 can look younger so that's again back to the aspect of sales the best headlines typically they will and this is not necessarily like a, a solid fact but good performing headlines will actually include some benefit right because it applies to the self-interest if i see uh i'll take it again from the perspective of if i see a headline if i see a headline that says top things you need to know to increase your client results in 2020 right it applies to my self-interest because i have clients i'd like to increase their results right in 2020 contemporary right top things and it's relevant to increase top things marketers need to know so it applies it applies to me as well right and it could apply to other demographics as well so include that like some some way to like appeal to the self-interest of the reader i've got an excel sheet of approximately 15,000 I think or 1,000 I think 1,000 headlines top performing headlines that have been taken from a wide array of uh, a wide array of sources and if you're interested in it simply comment below and I'll compile the file again I'll recompile it because it's all over the place it's an excel sheet of top performing headlines so whenever you're actually writing copy and you need an immediate headline you could just copy and adjust of course you wouldn't copy and paste the headline as it is you'd copy and adjust it because that makes better sense then um should appeal yeah the other in the average newspaper your headline this one uh this is just to give some rel like like an insight from a, a wider way like an external insight with regards to the industry and what we're dealing with right now in the average newspaper your headline has to compete for attention with 350 other headlines research has shown that readers travel so fast through this jungle they don't stop to decipher the meaning of obscure headlines your headline must be telegraph right your headline must telegraph what you want to say and it must telegraph it in plain language don't play games with the reader average newspaper newspaper which was the like most important medium um you could say years ago right whereas now it's social media for instance 350 other headlines now you're dealing with thousands like it's uncountable you're dealing with tens of thousands of posts that your readers go through like on a daily basis right and you're competing with the other tens of thousands so <laughs> if he's saying don't be obscure right and be straightforward when you're competing with 350 other headlines in the newspaper I guess you know what that means when he says <laughs> I guess you know what that means in today's day and age where you're competing with other tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of posts right be straightforward don't be obscure then regarding the body copy um, now the body copy is basically the copy of whatever you're writing applies to articles uh, video descriptions posts etc image descriptions and we'll just go on a like case by case basis there is a universal belief in lay circles that people won't read long copy nothing could be further from the truth claude hopkins once wrote five pages of solid text for schlitz beer etc research shows that readership falls off rapidly up to 50 words of copy but drops very little between 50 and 500 words 
etc. I use 700 pulling one. Da, da, da. So this is regarding the length of the copy. Regarding the length, there's always going to be two types of readers. There's going to be readers that are they're just in it for like that that quick fix at the end of the day, and then you have readers that are actually researching, and it's two different states of mind, right, of the reader. I'm sure you can personally relate to right scenarios in your like day-to-day -day life when you're just I need a quick fix. I need a quick fix of information in order to solve a problem. And I'm sure you can also relate to another like stage of your day where you're like, hmm, I'm actually interested in reading, finding out more, being engaged with the content, reading something that's long form. Humans can basically appreciate both short form and long form. It depends on what mood they're in, right? So this explains why there's an actual drop off after 50, but past 50, there isn't a a drop off between five and fifty. Did he mention? Fifth falls off rapidly up to fifty words. Shows readership falls off rapidly up to fifty words of copy. Yeah, that's why there's a there's a fall off of up to fit like up to fifty. There's a fall off, and then after fifty, they've qu like qualified themselves as the long form copy reader, and they just continue reading. So I guess that makes perfect sense. Um, in this scenario, right, it just basically means don't be afraid to write long form copy and also don't be afraid to write short form copy because both serve their own purposes. You're always going to have people that want to read short form. They just need that fix of information once again, as mentioned previously, and you're always going to have that long form, right? So people that basically want to read that long form copy, they want to read some research, they want to read an analysis, they want to read some facts, they want to get in deep, right? It's two different mindsets. Everybody goes through these two different mindsets at different times of the day. So that's with regards to that. Um, then, how long should your copy be? Again, depends on the product. If you're advertising chewing gum, there isn't much to tell, so make your copy short. On the other hand, you're advertising a product which has a great many different qualities to recommend it, right? Long copy. The more you tell, the more you sell. This, um, and I'll actually reference another book as well right now. This is pretty important because this is also the the length of copy in relation to the product or service that you're selling. So, and he's fully right. If you're selling chewing gum, I don't think long form copy would really suit, but you can test. So you could actually test it, right? Talk about the production process, state a couple of facts. But I also know that when you're purchasing a... Um, when you're purchasing a low ticket item, you don't really need that much information. When you're purchasing a high ticket item, so let's say you're buying a car, etc., you need as much information as possible so that you can make a intelligent and logical purchasing decision. So two different things for two different products, basically. The book that I wanted to reference as well is, I keep forgetting the name, it's about high ticket sales and low ticket sales. I'll probably drop it in the description if I remember after. But I also know that Ogilvy, generally, uh, he did advertisements for, I think, Rolls-Royce, if I'm not mistaken. And one of his advertisements, which appeared in a newspaper, right, was long-form, fact-based copy, right, for a Rolls-Royce car, which performed very, very well. Not short-form, not like car of your dreams, Rolls-Royce, no. Fact-based information regarding engine size, uh, I think like fuel output, etc., like how long it can drive for, and it did very, very well. So long and short, think about it in relation to the product or service that you're selling, right? What's the price point and what do people need? Put yourself in the position of the actual reader, right? Put yourself in the position of the target market. For instance, if I want to buy marketing services, right, what do I need, right? With an advertisement or with a, a text post saying, we sell leads, be enough for me right or would i need something along the lines of we sell leads to dentists right etc factual based approach we get them this and this and this way da, 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 fact based etc a couple of paragraphs feel free to schedule a call via this link it's a different story so always have it in relation to the actual product or service that you're selling with regards to the length of the copy and of course in relation to what the actual market wants to read right so put yourself in their position it is unrealistic to assume that customers will read a series of advertisements for the same product. You should shoot the works in every advertisement on the assumption that this is the only chance you will ever have to sell your product to the reader, now or never. Your copy is intended to sell. 
two points uh, with regards to this. Number one, your copy is, of course, intended to sell. And then the second segment with regards to this is you won't get a follow-up with copy. With sales, you'll most likely get a follow-up. You can easily say, let's you know reschedule the call for the upcoming Wednesday and we'll proceed and just talk from there. In marketing and in copywriting, right, you won't get that follow-up. <laughs> they'll either read your copy and they'll take action, right? Or, they're, they're, or they either won't read your copy or they'll read your copy, but because it was poor, they won't take action or because it was irrelevant, etc. So make sure that all the information and all the selling points and all the selling tactics of the copy are generally within that copy itself, right? So that's that's the one of the flip sides to it. So now or never. Then you should always include testimonials in your copy. The reader finds it easier to believe the endorsement of a fellow uh, consumer than the puffery of an anon anonymous copywriter. Yeah, yeah, they use testimonials. Very important, and I think it's uh, it's one of the best performing tactics that you can just generally adopt in your copywriting, especially for high margin items. Right? Um, it's different when you read copy that's you know the CMO or the the actual like person that wrote the copy itself talking about the benefits of the company and it's very different when you read a, a testimonial or even a video test or see a video testimonial and of course I'm I'm like sidetracking to another medium here but it's different when you see a testimonial from one of the clients one of the consumers and they talk about the positives of the product and the facts of the product and the experience that they've had with the product I know it's straightforward but as I mentioned now you have a lot of marketeers who sort of divert and they lose focus on the we sell or else right and they'll typically overlook these type of facts but it's key right even in your email um and this is something that i've had first-hand experience with for a b2c product if you include a user generated testimonial so some user generated content saying this product is the best etc that email will typically outperform an email that doesn't include this or an email that has even more copy that's not user generated and not a testimonial just written by a salesman or by a marketeer etc so generally speaking a testimonial in the copy will increase the potency by 10x now the 10x of course isn't a, a research figure but just to, to give you um, light into the right direction so that's that with regards to use testimonials and then the other one is this is my favorite one literally my favorite one and it's one that i struggle with myself in marketing and in sales you typically always have two types of people you have people that overcomplicate english <laughs> and then you have people that oversimplify english right and unfortunately i'm on the former so i overcomplicate and that's a bit of an issue because it means that if I write a copy and I use crazy words like thus far and uh, just words that are out of the ordinary, words that you don't use on a day-to-day -day basis when you're having simple communication, the copy will lose relevance. That's why it's always important for me to oversimplify it and be like, you know, um, if you want X benefit, buy now. And of course, that's a joke with regards to that level of simplicity, but it's just a problem that I've been dealing with. The other one is oversimplification. I actually don't know if that's that like a problem, but I know it might be a problem with regards to sales and how confident people are with the message that they deliver. But simple language is key, right? It has to be written anything, whether it's the video description, whether it's the title, whether it's the the language of the video itself. Simplify it. Simplify it to a point of where it sounds stupid. You know, if you're if you're overcomplicating, it's gonna sound stupid to you at some point, but simplify it to the max like to the maximum as much as you can because if it's over complicated and people can't relate with the language you, you've lost the reader right if it's simplified and then everybody understands it you've gained readers right so always always and even in sales try to oversimplify your language right the way you write like the the information that you're trying to uh, send across i had this other issue i would always whenever i did copywriting i would always write so as to so like i'd always write so as to so like an example I'm trying to think of an example um 
Mark went to the shop so as to buy beans, for instance, when it could have just been Mark went to the shop to buy beans. You see what I mean? It's these small things where when you just simplify, it saves you time. It makes the writing more efficient as well, less time consuming, right? And it's easier for the reader to absorb. So think about that simplification of language with regards to copy. And then um, this one. Uh, I'll... I didn't include the full segment here, but there was a bet between, I think, Ogilvy and another advertiser. And he's like, um, I bet you $10 you'll read my copy. And then the other guy's like, I don't even need to bet with you. Um, if I just include your name in the headline, I know you'll read it, right? And this is important for a wide array of reasons, for a lot of reasons, right? It goes back to the top to bottom approach, right? Where it's like, if you're marketing and if you're writing copy or if you're creating video content or whatever, right? When you're thinking about who am I creating this for, don't think about a group of people. Always think about one person. And I think I've, I might be mistaken, but I think I've read this in scientific advertising as well, right? It's the same thing just like in sales. Narrow it down to one, right? And then the relevancies from this one will sort of scale themselves like on their own to the hundreds to the thousands because people share certain traits amongst one another and the exact same thing applies to to content that's one perspective now uh narrow it down and that's that uh guys if you have any questions comment in the comment section below i hope you guys found this of value i think i'll be releasing a lot more content of this format um and yeah as always we run a growth hackers inc whatsapp group so this is a like top top of the industry growth hacking community which is full of elite growth hackers both on facebook and on whatsapp there's a link to the facebook group in the description make sure you join and for marketeers we're running mastermind 48 which is a mastermind the whatsapp group is for chief marketing officers only but then mastermind 48 i think we'll be releasing a facebook group soon depending upon the demand that we get for the group it's uh, itself and uh, yeah that's about it basically